Thank you, Charles. I invite Gidon and Bahar to the, uh, to the podium to talk about more operationally how the foreign ministry sees this problem of anti-Semitism on the ground and what can be done about it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Professor Ganor, for inviting me to speak in this very distinguished uh, uh, conference. Well, I, usually I'm a very optimistic person, but when I come to speak on anti-Semitism, I'm more and more becoming pessimistic because the situation of anti-Semitism is the world is very worrying. And if we do not take immediate actions today to stop and to counter anti-Semitism, the situation will deteriorate more and more. This is my main point on this lecture. I will go to the slide. Sorry. Okay. I would like to go through four main points. The first one is that anti-Semitism is significantly on the rise in the European Union. The second one is that Islamic radicalism or Islamic anti-Semitism is the main source of anti-Semitism today in the European Union. The third one is that the internet is a major contributor to the rise of anti-Semitism. The last point, which I will show later on, is uh, what can be done to fight uh, anti-Semitism. Now allow me uh, to elaborate on these uh, uh, points. We have all in mind in our memories, the films, the photos, the articles that we have all read and seen during the Protective Edge operation. We saw the huge demonstrations in Europe. We saw people <coughs> shouting Jews to the gas again for the first time in Germany since the Second World War. We have seen how much hatred was put into the Jews of Europe. This is not something new. This was built on a process that took already more than a decade. Because organizations that monitor anti-Semitism, whether the CST in Britain, whether it's the SPG in France, whether it's the Cantor uh, Center here in uh, the, the University of Tel Aviv, where it is the ADL and others, all show a steady rise in anti-Semitism. I remember just maybe two years ago when a parliamentarian from the Yobik party in Hungary was saying, Let's count the Jews because they are a threat to our national security. We remember the Golden Dawn uh, uh, party in Greece uh, denying the Holocaust very openly. And things like that were building and building and building in Belgium, in uh, Switzerland, in Austria, in the Nordic states, in, in, in Sweden, in Denmark, and in many other places. The situation today now, ladies and gentlemen, is like that. Jews are afraid to be Jews anymore in, 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 in the European Union. Personally, I couldn't believe it that after the Holocaust, again, Jews will be afraid to walk in the streets of Europe and taking away their kippahs or taking away mezuzahs from homes or not wearing Magen Davids anymore. And I'm asking myself and others, What's going on? Is, really, this is, is, is this something really? This is again happening in Europe, on, the Europe, on European soil? Unbelievable. Many Jews today in Europe are opting for three options. And this is the beginning of the phenomenon. Under the stress of anti-Semitism and also under the stress of banning Jewish circumcision, and Jewish slaughter in many countries in Europe, Jews are facing, are being faced with three options. One is to immigrate away from Europe. This is already happening. The second one is to assimilate. This also happening when Jews are taking away their kippahs or mezuzahs or whatever, and to uh, put themselves into enclaves of, uh, of uh, under security. When I travel in Europe and I stand for the weekend and I want to go to, to pray, it's very easy for me to recognize from a distance the synagogue. The street is closed, there is security, 
security cameras, etc. I do not know any other religion or religious minority in Europe that has to live like that. Nowhere else. And we are accepting it as normal. We are accepting it, and we should not accept this anymore. My second point is that Islamic radicalism or Islamic anti-Semitism is the main source today of anti-Semitism in Europe. As uh, Charles Small was saying, Islamists are the shock troops of anti-Semitism today on European soil. <laughs> just uh, when I used to give lectures uh, just before uh, the operation in Gaza, I would say that there are four major sources of anti-Semitism. Uh, it's like anti-Semitism of the far right or radical uh, wings, parties like Ro Yobik or Golden Dawn and others, Islamic anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism on the internet, and uh, anti-Semitism which is coming from the left, the radical left. Today, I've changed my opinion. We have seen all the demonstrations. I've seen the demonstrations in Den Haag, for instance, where we saw ISIS flags, Al-Qaeda flags, Hamas flags, Hezbollah flags being raised in one of the most distinguished capitals of Europe. And what the people were shouting there? They were shouting, let me quote in Arabic, Chai bar, Chai bar ya Yahud, Jaish Muhammad, Safa Yahud, which relates to a historical event at the beginning of Islam, when <coughs> the first uh, Muslim a concord, an oasis in the desert in Saudi Arabia today, which was inhabited by Jews. It was called Khaybar and massacred its, 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 its inhabitants. And what is going to happen now? They are calling again for the massacre of Jews. Again, again and again. And it happened in other capitals of Europe. Can we accept it? It happened also in New York. Yes, there, in the big Jewish city, also happening there. We saw what was happening in France, in Sarcelles, in the suburb of Sarcelles, in Paris, where f hundreds of Jews were, uh, f found themselves under a siege in a, in a synagogue in the middle of, of, of Paris, again. We saw how Jewish uh, 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 shops were attacked in Sarcelles, riots against Jews. Anti-Semitism is very viable and it is carried out again by second and third generation of radical Muslim immigrants in Europe. And this brings me to another point, the point of jihadists coming to Europe. You have heard it all. This is an immediate threat to the security of Jewish communities in Europe. In 2012, there was an attack in Toulouse, in France, against the Jewish school. Four people were murdered. The person who carried it out was Muhammad Merach, a jihadist returning from Afghanistan, fighting for the Taliban. Again, in 2014, this year, a deadly attack on the Jewish Museum in Brussels, four dead. And we keep hearing and hearing that police is dismantling uh, networks here, terrorist networks, networks here and there of Islamists that have objections to harm and to heart and to attack Jews in uh, Europe. I'm going to my third point, the point of uh, 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 the internet. Much is being said on the internet, but the internet also is a main field of anti-Semitism. If you go to Facebook, if you go to YouTube, to Google, to Twitter, you will find enormous amounts of anti-Semitism. I want to give you a challenge. Go to Google or go to tweet, uh, sorry, to, to YouTube and put, do a search, Jews are, or the phrase Jews are, and see what's coming out. You will find tons of films of anti-Semitic character in, in, in YouTube. If you do it in Google, you will find the Jew Watch, one of the most notorious anti-Semitic websites, comes to you second or third. And this is what people have to learn about Jews from the internet. You know Yahoo Answers, you know Wikipedia, also uh, lots of, 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 of things are written there uh, uh, of anti-Semitic characters against, against Jews or the state of Israel or Judaism. So anti-Semitism <coughs> on the web is a significant problem and it pushes 
anti-Semitism on the ground. What's going on in this virtual world is immediately translated to the ground, immediately. In many languages, it can be in English, it can be French, uh, Russian, but also Turkish, Persian, Arabic, Hungarian, Greek, and other languages. It's all over there. And coming to my last point, what can be done? Okay. First of all, we must be aware of anti-Semitism, of new anti-Semitism, uh, of the technology brings with it new opportunities for anti-Semitism. One recently was an application for smartphones to download the protocols of the elders of Zion in Arabic. Finally, it was uh, removed. But these things are, 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 are keep changing. There is no one form of anti-Semitism. There are many, many forms of anti-Semitism that support one another. So one should be, first of all, and foremost, aware of it. Secondly, the responsibility to protect Jewish communities in Europe lies within the hands of European governments and within the institutions of the European Union. The Jews are of France, the Jews of Belgium, the Jews of Britain or Germany are first of all and foremost the citizens of their countries and they should be protected and be given <coughs> the, the right to live freely as any other European citizen. European governments and the European institutions have the most powers in their hands, the most tools to fight anti-Semitism. And there must be a real action now, otherwise it will be too late. It will be too late. I'm very pessimistic, as I said in the beginning of my lecture, because I think that what we saw during the operation in Gaza is only the beginning, because the undercurrent streams that push anti-Semitism in Europe are getting stronger and stronger and will continue like that. Prohibit anti-Semitic uh, 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 demonstrations. I think this is un understood. Prohibit uh, carrying the flags of uh, ISIS, Al Qaeda, etc. Prohibit people coming with face covered. Prohibit people from shouting uh, and chanting uh, anti-Semitic uh, slogans during these uh, 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 demonstrations. Sorry, I just got mixed with the pages. Okay. Uh, monitor and report anti-Semitism. Not all European countries monitor anti-Semitism, at least in a coherent way. There, there is a need to monitor it, like what is done in the <coughs> United Kingdom or in France, and to report. Most of the victims of anti-Semitism do not report on anti-Semite incidents. They are afraid. They say the police will not treat it, etc., etc. European governments and European institutions, again, have to encourage, have to take actions, and it was recommended also by European institutions that, these, <laughs> that people should report on anti-Semitic uh, incidents. New legislation. <coughs> there is legislation against anti-Semitism or racism or genocides or Holocaust denial in some European countries. This is not enough. Not every European country has a legislation like this. I can tell you that, for instance, now Greece is passing this, these moments, this, this, these days is passing a very good legislation uh, against uh, anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. It should be served as an example. Education for tolerance <coughs> and for uh, Holocaust remembrance. Many of the newcomers to Europe do not share the core values of Europe. They are unaware of the history of Europe. When we meet with European uh, representatives, with our colleagues in Europe, we tell them, guys, we don't need special action, actions from you. Defend your European values. Defend the values of uh, freedom of speech, of equal rights between men and women. Defend the democracy. Defend the, uh, the, 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 the free speech. Defend the right for, uh, to, to practice your religion uh, openly. When you defend it, when you work on it, when you teach and you put an emphasis on European history 
then included it, there will be also measures taken against anti-Semitism as, as well as against uh, racism. The other point is isolate the Muslim extremists and engage and encourage moderate leadership. For me, it is unbelievable that people can, <coughs> can that preachers, Muslim preachers, can preach in, in, in many mosques in Europe uh, against uh, democracy, uh, against human rights, against uh, and against uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, uh, pronounce anti-Semitic uh, uh, slogans. This should be uh, prohibited. I'm finishing. Encourage the moderates. It's very important. There are many, many moderates, Muslim leadership in Europe. I myself have lived nine years in Muslim countries. Four years in Tunisia five years in Senegal, and I know it exists. I know you can cooperate. There is the Imam Hassan Shalgumi from France. <coughs> there is the, the mayor of, uh, of Rotterdam, Abu Taleb. There is the Ahmadi movement in, uh, in, in, in Europe. There are Sufi Muslims who are moderate. We can find partners and we should encourage them. If we do not do that, we leave the field only for the ones who are extremists. Regulate hate speech on the internet, this is another point, and encourage interfaith dialogue, this is also very important. When people talk to one another, <coughs> walls are being reduced and people understand one another. So please let me uh, uh, finish on this maybe more uh, optimistic uh, notion. Thank you very much.